I got my new Laguna BX14 220 volt 2.5 horsepower bandsaw and I've been using it for a couple weeks now. So it's a good time to do a quick review of the setup process and some things that you should probably know if you're going to buy one of these saws. We'll say overall it's a great saw. I, I replaced a jet one horsepower saw and this has changed the way that I do band sawing. And I've already made uh, quite a stack over there. Some of that was from the old saw, but I can't stop. Between that and the Granberg mill, I just keep cutting down trees and cutting wood. And uh, this thing makes it easy. 2.5 horsepower, there, there's no shortage of power for resawing, cutting larger logs, uh, cutting turning blanks. These are some old blanks that I've just had sitting in the shed forever. And everything from oak, maple. And if you look closely, you can see they almost look like they've been planed. These are bandsaw cuts on all of them. So it does, uh, does a really nice job with the finish of, of the, the cuts after you get it set up. And that's with the, with the Laguna 3 quarter inch Resaw King blade, which is not cheap, but it, it, I think it's definitely worth it if you're going to do any resawing work. So first off, uh, after you get the saw assembled, couple things I noticed were this plate right here was really difficult to get perfectly flat. In fact, I, I still think it's probably moved again. Yeah, I got some light there. I've, I've tried to tweak this thing a couple times and it just doesn't turn out quite right. At first it was it was it had a hump in it, um, front to back, side to side. So I just put a piece of sandpaper on, on the table saw and and just rub this against the, the sandpaper until it took off some of the high spots. I will probably talk to Laguna about this and see if they can just send a replacement because so far their, their customer service has been outstanding. Anything that's been wrong they've, they've walked me through or um, sent a replacement part for. Um, but this is, this is I think a, a shortcoming of the saw. Probably just build a, uh, a wooden insert plate to go in there. Blade alignment is, is pretty simple, as with most saws normally is. You just uh, loosen, oops, you loosen, that should be tightened. Loosen this nut here and then you can turn this knob um, as you manually rotate the wheel. And you want to get the, something's not right there. I know what it is. Yep, I will put the blade tension back on. Now that should line back up. Oh, I hope that didn't come off the track. There we go. Alright. And they got the window here so you can see where it is. The, the blade should be approximately in the center of the wheel. Uh, and that, that keeps it from... If it's too far to the front, it might curve that way. If it's too far to the back, it might curve that way. And that's important when you're, when you're resawing. A lot of saws come with a little, um, like a little guide that goes in the middle here and that way you can adjust the wood as you're pushing it through the blade. That's really not necessary with a quality saw. If you have your blade aligned right, it should cut in, in a straight line. I mean, if you look at one of those bandsaw sawmills in action or any, any commercial sawmill, you don't see anybody moving the log down, down through the guide. It, they just cut straight because the blade is in, in a straight line with the fence. So moving on to the fence, <coughs> uh, I'm still not sure if I like this fence or not. It, it's done pretty well, I guess. Uh, I had to do some adjustment. You have three three set screws here, which allow you to uh, to move the blade side to side. That's important to get the blade parallel with the miter gauge, because if you make any kind of any kind of jigs that uh, are going to run on the miter gauge, you want this to be parallel to the blade. And then, of course, you want the blade to be parallel to the fence. So these all need to line up in a straight line. Uh, so if, if the fence does not line up with the blade, don't just adjust the blade tracking to try to get it to go straight, because then it might not line up with the miter gauge. Uh, make sure they're all in a straight line. So for the fence, it's just these three set screws. You loosen them with the, the wrench they provide. And I recommend buying a magnet, because that makes it real helpful to to put that wrench in a convenient place. Uh, loosen the screws, adjust it, check it, do it again, 
and do it about 20 more times until it's just right. On the vertical, one problem I ran into was that the fence was not square with the table. Now it is. To adjust that, there are two, let's see, can you see that? Maybe not. There are two little set screws inside there. It might be in the shadows. Um, if you tighten those set screws, let me just take this off and show you. Loosen those uh, knobs on the side. This slides off, and that way you can put it back on for for uh, cutting smaller pieces so you can lower the, the guard down farther. But those set screws are right there, and there's one on the bottom too. And when you adjust those set screws, it'll push the fence in or out to make it level. It's just those two screws for a fence that's 16 inches long or so. Which I don't know if that's a great system. I guess it kind of works. I got the blade square now. But one thing that uh, seems to be the case with, with this fence, you'll see the set screws in action as I tighten it up. It, it uh, tightens first in the front and then it kind of pivots over that screw and straightens itself back up. But uh, one problem with this fence setup is this bar here. Uh, it, it doesn't lock in the back, it just locks in the front. That's, that's free floating. There's a little nylon, let me show that. There's a little nylon screw here uh, that pushes this off the table a little bit so the fence is free floating and doesn't drag. It cuts down on wear, but since it doesn't clamp in the back, it doesn't take a lot of pressure back here to get that blade to move or deflect a sixteenth or maybe, yeah, probably about a sixteenth of an inch. So whenever I'm cutting, I've, I've just made a note to make sure that I'm putting pressure on the front of the blade. And if I go behind the saw to pull a piece out, I, I try not to push on the back because then it's going to change the, the width of my cut. Um, other than that, the, the fence seems to work pretty well. It's, it's a nice big aluminum fence and it's in line with the blade so I can, I can resaw quite easily. As long as the camera is here, see I've already torn this thing up. Uh, it's probably a little too close to the table. They, I would say they should have done that at an angle or just flipped it so it was along the front the front of the table. Uh, if you cut any any logs or any wood that is really uneven um, has curves in it, it's probably going to rub against this uh, this scale as it's going into the saw. And now this is pretty much completely useless. So I think that I will build a replacement for that. All it is is a piece of angle iron with, with two bolts holding it in. So maybe just get rid of this and just use a regular piece of angle iron, uh, flat, not angle iron rather, just flat stock and put the um, put the guide on there so that you can line up the zero with your with your blade. As long as we're inside the bottom cabinet, this is the, the foot brake. That's a really handy feature because these wheels are, are sleek and they will keep spinning for, for quite a while after you turn off the saw. The foot brake is a nice quick way to uh, just to stop the blade completely. It's got a micro switch, you can hear that clicking. When you hit the foot brake it cuts off the power and then actually applies pressure to the brake so you can uh, stop the wheel from spinning quickly. That's also handy if you have some kind of a, a disaster while you're you're cutting and you need to uh, you want to hold on to whatever's on the table and stop the saw. That's a, a nice safe way to do it. The brake can be adjusted using this little lever here. It's in the instruction manual, but uh, I think it's uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. So if the blade blade is is uh, not working quite right, you just tighten that knob up a little bit and. If it is working, uh, leave it alone. The way that I tested mine is I just started spinning the wheel and stepped on the foot brake and it, it shouldn't move. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on that brake and it's not moving. If you loosen it up and step on the foot brake, it'll still spin with a little bit of pressure. 
and it shouldn't shouldn't scratch. You shouldn't hear it rubbing against that blade. What you hear there is just the sound of the blade going through the, the guides. Now, one other issue I ran into is that the bottom blade was not coplanar with the top blade, meaning that I got this guy in the center of the wheel, and then when I went to the bottom, the blade was uh, riding off the front. And I think that was causing me some trouble with, uh, since it was in the front of the wheel, it was causing the blade to twist a little bit inwards, which was giving me trouble getting the blade line with the miter slot and the fence. Uh, so to fix that, I went through customer support. Again, they were very helpful. Called back shortly after I put in the ticket and walked me through loosening up the top and the bottom screws here. The, uh, the bolts on the surface are really just holding these nuts from, from moving, or the, I guess they're, they're bolts uh, technically. Uh, loosen these, the top and the bottom one up. Don't mess with the side ones. I don't know what they do, but they said just use the, the top and the bottom. So I, I loosened up the, um, the retaining bolts and then uh, adjusted these guys right here in and out uh, to, it was the top one, to push the blade in and out until the, uh, the, the blade on the bottom was tracking in the center as well. I found while I was tightening it that it wasn't quite tracking right and this bolt right here as I continued to tighten it was getting extremely difficult to turn and they told me to keep turning it. I wasn't going to break anything so I did. I kept turning it and then a couple days later I noticed that the blade was grinding on something. So what happened there is as the blade was rotating this way, as the top came out and the bottom went in, the blade was actually hitting on, it was rubbing against this gear, or this pulley uh, bearing right there. You can see how it's kind of shiny on the surface because the blade was rubbing against it right underneath here. So you can, uh, optionally, I don't think my camera is going to fit, oh yeah, there we go, there are two uh, two set screws on this this uh, pulley that you can loosen to slide it in a little bit if you have if you have some room. This was sticking out quite a bit, so I slid the uh, the pulley back just a little. So after I got this loosened um, and pushed back a little bit, then I could go back to the to the other side and, and adjust the wheel to get the the tracking just right. And then I had to go back and, and realign the top wheel um, again. And then adjust the brake because it, it moved the moved the wheel. That took probably an hour or so to get that right. It was a it was a huge pain in the neck, but it's working now and it, it cuts flawlessly. Uh, once sorry, the longer we're inside the cabinet, there's a brush here, which is supposed to clean the wheel, keep the keep the pitch and residue off of there. As you can see, there's still pitch and residue on there. I've been cutting some green wood, so it's kind of hard to avoid that. Uh, this this brush was probably the biggest pain in the neck of, of the entire setup because it's held in place with a couple bolts, two bolts in there, right? So to tighten those bolts, I put in, let's see, put in a wrench. Nope, can't turn a wrench. Put in the socket. Socket won't fit. I can't even fit my pinky in there barely. So somehow you're supposed to figure out how to tighten these these little bolts here while holding the bolts on the top so it doesn't turn, which, which had uh, toothed washers. I guess that's supposed to help. Uh, but th this was this was loose when I got it, so the, the nuts on this side were slowly coming loose, and I was just waiting for them to drop off and get in between the, the blade and the wheel. So that was kind of important to tighten that up. Uh, that's really just in a bad spot, and it should be moved maybe maybe over to the other side. I don't know. But... Anyway, that, that's a bad spot. The way I ended up fixing that is I replaced the bolts. Uh, I think they were six millimeter. And I put some cap screws in there so that I can get a hex wrench in and hold the top of the cap screw. And then I had to use um, a socket wrench with, with uh, two universal joints to get up in there and basically do like a fraction of a turn at a time, pull it out, put it back in, fraction of a turn. It, it took, once I figured out how to actually do that, it probably took 10 minutes to get those things tightened up enough where I wasn't concerned about the, the nuts coming loose. Uh, but anyway, it, uh, I guess it's supposed to keep some pitch off the blade. Probably needs something a little, 
little more aggressive than this brush, but I'm sure it helps a little bit if you're uh, if you're cutting dry wood, not not pitchy wood. These are for table adjustment. I uh, won't spend too much time on that. The bolt over here is moved up or down to make the table flat. So if you loosen these guys up, and you can pick up the table, set it back down, and you just adjust this bolt until the table is uh, 90 degrees with the saw or with the with the blade rather. A couple different ways you can check that. One is with uh, engineer square or a machinist square. You shouldn't see any light between the square and the blade. Another way to do it, which which I prefer now that I got one of these, is this cool magnetic uh, Wixy digital angle gauge. Turn that on and zero it. Zero. So now that's zero degrees. And then it's magnetic, so you stick it on the blade, not touching the teeth, and you adjust the table until you're at 90 degrees. And you can see right now, as you can see from the camera angle, there we go, uh, 90.1. I've adjusted this a couple times, this bolt over here, and it seems that no matter how many times I set it to, the, to 90, when I, when I set it back down or adjust the table, it, it ends up something different. So. I think 90.1 is pretty good. It's close enough for most bandsaw work, um, but if you want to get it just right, you can. This is a, a quick, easy way to to fix that. Although, if you consult the machinist square, the machinist square I think still says this is is perfectly square. I can't see light, so that uh, maybe a little bit at the top. That's that's really close. I mean, that's that's close enough for most applications. Blade tension is done by this wheel right here, and you also have the uh, the quick tension release, so you can release the tension when you're not using the saw. That's just great, very convenient. And then once you tension that up, then you turn this wheel here and look at the scale on the inside until all right. Let's just open the door until it's uh, calibrated right for the blade that you're using. Now once you take off the tension lever in the back again, you lose all that tension. Don't make the mistake of turning on the saw without pulling this lever back up, because if you do, this thing will run right off the track and then it's a big pain in the neck to, well, a small pain in the neck to, to take everything off again. At least they make it easy with this magnetic door that flips open. But then you have to uh, take this, uh, the table, clamp off of here and take off this horrible throat plate and um, this is easy right here they got a slot in there so you can just slide the blade right out through and set everything up again so that's your your uh, pre-use checks make sure all the doors are closed dang it make sure the fence is out of the way how did I pull that off? All right, so I guess I got to take the fence in. I'm still getting used to opening and closing doors. There we go. And then tighten that back up. All right, what else should we cover? These blade guards are, they're ceramic. They seem to work really well, but they're a bit of a hassle to set up. I think my biggest issue with these, um, they, they support the blade really well. There's there's one ceramic disc in the back, which you see I've already rotated it once or twice uh, just to hit some fresh fresh ceramic. Um, these tighten up the, the two pieces that move side to side. This allows the, this thing to move forward and back because this holds a ceramic disc and that you want to have a little bit of space in between the disc and the and the blade. I just went with a folded up piece of paper inside there and then clamp this, clamp the back. Um, and then this holds the, uh, the side to side movement on this so you can get it so it's straight up and down with the blade. This one's cool. Great. No problems here. Uh, the, the problem is when you want to adjust this thing underneath there 
And let's see, there's there's a set screw right there. I don't know how I'm supposed to fit my hot dog fingers back in there to turn this thing. It, it's usually just a, a painful process. I'm hoping I didn't tighten it too much the first time and trying to get enough pressure to turn this guy. I, I'm dreading how I'm going to pull this off in, in 20 years my hands are a little bit older and, and, uh, and weaker. Uh, these are not too bad to turn. There's another one there. I can kind of turn that. And then if you can see it, there's one behind it. Which again, now, now I'm trying to turn a tighten up knob from that awkward position. There's got to be a better way to do that. But that's that's how it is. And it, it holds the blade okay. It guides everything just fine. Uh, the, just this bottom one is a real, uh, real pain in the neck to adjust. So even though they've done a lot of work to make blade changes super easy with this lever and with the magnetic door and the slot cut on the other side, as soon as you change a blade, you have to come down here and adjust this thing. So I'm still stuck in the same situation as everybody who owns a bandsaw, is I have one blade in there and I don't want to change it unless it's absolutely necessary because it's such a pain in the neck. Uh, this thing here, this is awesome. Uh, loosen the, loosen the uh, knob in the back and then turn this wheel to take it up or down. And it, it spins nicely. Move it up pretty quickly and it stays parallel with the blade, which is, is just one of the greatest things about it. You don't have to adjust the, um, the guides every time. And when you have it all the way up, I think they, I don't remember what they advertise the depth of cut as, but probably should have had a tape measure handy. Actual depth of cut is going to be Maybe 13 and a quarter you could probably squeeze on there. Maybe a hair more if you really wanted to. Uh, so that's that's not bad. You get a little bit of extra. It's not, not just a 12 inch cut. And then back down. It's real easy to move. Tighten the knob in the back and you'll see it kind of pulls itself back into position there. And that's running on this nice uh, rack and pinion system. And lastly, what else should we cover? Dust collection. Uh, the dust collection seems to work very well. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. These are exactly four inches in outside diameter. I got one of these cool things. I only have a shop vac. I haven't upgraded to a, a nice dust collection system yet, so I'm trying to suck everything into that guy right there. So I got one of these adapters for that fits the shot vac on this side, which is also exactly four inch diameter. So I've uh, put some masking tape on there the first time thinking I was going to come back later and change it. And then I ended up coming back and putting some electrical tape on there and I, I keep knocking this off or a piece of wood falls on it and pulls it off. Got to figure out something, something better for that. If you have an actual dust collection system with two four inch ports, that's ideal. Um, Otherwise, you're going to have to tape it or put some hose clamps and some rubber around it or something like that. But uh, it, it keeps the saw relatively clean. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with that part. I'll, uh, lately, actually, just out of pure laziness, I'll just I'll start up the saw and just set that guy right there. And it gets most of the dust out of there that, that's flying through. Um, all of the dust really... Just sits down on the bottom there. Um, I just blasted this with the air compressor, so I, think I kicked a little more back on the inside. But all the dust ends up piled down at the bottom here, so it doesn't doesn't stick up in the cabinet. Uh, I just open it up when I'm done and vacuum everything out. In the top cabinet, almost no dust ends up inside here, and maybe a little bit in this corner of the door, which is fine. Not enough to interfere with the blade at all. So. If you just have a shot back, that, that solution will work well enough until you uh, get rich enough to upgrade. So to see what the setup saw does, let's go, that's just a little piece of Purple Heart right there. Got a crack in it, so I'm not too worried about doing some damage. All right, the blade tension is up. The door is closed. The guide is... lowered to a reasonable height. The knob is tightened in the back, 
so this guy doesn't move. And the fence is in place. I'm going to go for a nice, nice thin cut there. And I'm going to do it one handed, so maybe you'll get to see me lose a finger. Wouldn't that be fun? It's not sitting perfectly flat on the bottom. Well, that's better. Okay. Um, that might, I'm going to take just a hair more. Tap, 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 tap. All right. Nazis are going nuts right now. Put it in the comments. Somebody will read it. So that's the cut. That was a one-handed cut, so I had a few, uh, few little marks there when it changed direction. But overall, let me hold it up in the light. You can see the bandsaw marks. They're not too bad. Uh, I, could, I could sand that off or plane it off lightly. And that's a nice, nice wafer-thin cut of purple heart there which could be used for veneering or anything else. Now that's it. That is the setup of a Laguna 14BX 220 volt 2.5 horsepower bandsaw. It's hard to believe that three years went by since I bought this thing and I never got around to publishing that video, but uh, I figured the least I can do is a quick follow-up to see if any of the information that I put in the earlier section has changed. Let's see, I got a new dust collection on there, or modified dust collection. I decided to actually get or build a, a dust collection system. That's a modified Harbor Freight thing. I'll put a link somewhere, description or wherever. And uh, that's been working out pretty well. The, uh, the throat insert plate, or the, whatever it is, the insert plate, I uh, got a replacement from Laguna. Uh, again, easy deal, they just shipped out a replacement. I still had to, uh, to do a little bit of sanding to get it flat, but close enough, and it's, it's uh, been working pretty well. Uh, I think I am still on one of my original blades, uh, the, uh, the Resaw King. I, I have another one, a new one, that I might switch to pretty soon. I've had this sharpened once because I hit the, a BB or something and a little piece of, of uh, pink ivory that just destroyed a few teeth on that blade. And... The fence, I've, I've been okay with the fence. I was a little uh, uncertain about it at first. Like I said, I, I've been using technique to, uh, to deal with that and haven't really had any problems with things being out of square. And I, let's see, it hasn't moved from the original spot because I'm not paying their king's ransom for that mobile base. And other than that, I think that the one main thing that I don't like about this bandsaw is that it eats up too much space way too much space. And when I, when I say it eats up too much space, I mean, I got, uh, got some ash. I got a big stack of beech, a little hickory on top, a little bit of ambrosia maple left under that. I think I have a bunch of oak mixed in there and I have buckets full of plumwood. I have some more beech. I have, uh, let's see, there's some poplar standing up there left over from when I did the, the king size bed. I have some stuff on the top shelf over the washer and dryer. And I got a few odds and ends stuffed in my cart there. I have uh, see some chestnut oak, some I think that's pear, those blocks there, some more ash. And that's not even getting into my, my shed outside. I have some more white oak, more plumwood, and some, I think, red oak and chestnut oak. So it is a bit of a space hog. I don't really buy much lumber anymore because I just, uh, I just, you know, find trees that somebody's trying to get rid of on Craigslist or, or wherever, and and that has been supplying me for quite a long time. I've, I've done quite a few projects in the house that have just used uh, wood that I've I've sourced locally or in my own yard. So, considering the one thousand five hundred dollar or so price tag on this thing, I was a little, you know, it was a tough decision to make at first, but I would say that in the uh, the quantity of lumber that I've ended up with as a result of buying this thing. I think it's uh, it's pretty well paid for itself already. So I don't regret the purchase. And I, I haven't blown the motor out on this thing like I did with my uh, 
my uh, one horsepower jet band saw two or three times. I, I blew the capacitor anyway on that thing. And uh, this thing has been holding up like a champ. So uh, I have no regrets about my decision. I think it's a great bandsaw. And if you're looking for one, uh, make sure that you get one that is going to have enough power to do what you want it to do. I hope this was helpful and gives you a little mental ammunition to use in justifying your next major tool purchase. Have fun.